So my name is Arya Anand. I am one of the admin panel members in HS Skill International. So today we are discussing regarding reading part A. Okay, so before moving further, I'd like to thank Father Celine Joseph and um, all the empowering members and the admin panel members for the support and guidance. So we'll move to the session. I'll share my screen. So OET 2.0, Occupational English set, Test. And today's topic is like subtest reading part A. Okay. So what's your opinion about reading part A? Whether it's easy to complete or you have difficulty to complete reading part A? Tough, ma'am, tough. Easy, but the timing is difficult. Too okay. much tough, easy, but the timing is very difficult, ma'am. Easy, man, but it's not complete in the 15 minutes. Even okay. me, I cannot manage the time. Time management uh -huh. is the requirement. Okay, fine. Time so when you will think time. about reading part A, it will be like this, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Am I right? Yeah. That's all right. Yes, I'm not brilliant exactly, to crack OET. Most of the students, they will say, yes. I don't think I can crack OET. And some of them will say, like, time is my enemy. And some of them will question us, like, is it possible to complete within 15 minutes? And so many other queries, okay? Like, so many other questions. But as an HU skill aspirant, after this session, after some days or weeks of practice, you will say like it is possible and it is possible to complete within 10 to 12 minutes, not even 15 minutes. Oh. Fine. Yeah. Okay. So in yes, reading sir. part A, hope you all have the printed material with you, right? What we have yes. shared. Yes. So when you will get your reading part A material, you will have two booklets. One is the text booklet and the other one is question and answer booklet, right? So yes. in the text booklet, you will have four text, text A, B, C, and D, fine? And there will be one theme. It depends on like, oh, what is the topic, okay? And for example, I have just mentioned here in text A, sometimes it will be definition and text B, clinical assessment or diagnosis, text C, management, text D, monitoring. And please remember, this will not be same for all the topics, okay? This sequence okay. will not be same for all the topics. So sometimes in text A, they will mention some other thing, like uh, sometimes it will be management, sometimes it will be assessment. So it depends on the topic, what you will get, right? Then you will have 20 questions. So one to 20 questions you will have in your reading part A. And you have only 15 minutes to complete all those questions. You will not get even one second extra to complete the questions. Okay, so you will get only 15 minutes. This, you, you always keep in your mind that you will get only 15 minutes, fine? And the greatest challenge or enemy is time. Okay, so your enemy is your time. So... Fine. That is the major problem. Most of the students are facing this problem, time. Anyway, we'll see whether we can crack this or not. So fourth one is expeditious reading or fast reading task. So what skill you need to do is fast reading. Okay, so these are the things you need to remember when you will get your reading part A. And what is the expected band or numerical score you wish to get? Most of them will say like, I want a B grade. I want only 350. So if you are aiming for 350, you will end up with 300, 320, 330 at all. Okay. You will not reach 350. You will not get B, B score. So always think you need to score A grade. That means mm. 450 to 500. Fine. Don't think about B grade. We don't entertain C plus, C, D, E and all. Okay. We want our aspirants to get A grade. And it is possible. Okay. 
So to get a, an A grade, what uh, score you need to achieve, it's 450 to 500. And in reading part A, you need to score at least 18 out of 20 so that you will get an A grade. But you need to score in your reading part B and C as well. Okay, not only uh, in reading part A. But I'd like to recommend you all, okay, you need to score 20 out of 20, not 18 out of 20. Okay, you need uh -oh. to score 20 out of 20. So you'll be safe. And yes, as I told before, your greatest mistake is targeting B grade. So definitely you will end up with 330, 340, 320 like that. You will not get 350. So reading part A in 10 minutes. Step one, begin with a scheme. I think uh, most of them are believing like you need to do a scanning. Scanning is different from skimming. What is skimming? You are just uh, reading some of the words. You're not reading completely. If you're reading completely, it is scanning. If you're not reading completely, it is skimming, just skimming the text so that you can uh, underline the important words. That's it, not even a complete sentence. So that is the difference between skimming and scanning. And you don't need to uh, scan because um, yes, for uh, maybe uh, like one or two questions, you need to scan the text. Most of the time, no need to scan the text. Only with the skimming, you can find out the answer. So when you will think about reading part A, the main thing you need to keep in your mind is like, you need to skim the text. So for that, you need to practice well, how to skim. What to skim, okay? So what to skim? Skim the title. When you will get the reading material, definitely you will see what is the topic, right? What is the heading of that particular reading part A? So it is the title, section headings. If you have any section headings that you need to underline, then subheadings, names. Names means any name name of the body part, name of the device, name of a person, name of a disease, name of the symptom, whatever it is. So name you need to underline. Then number, percentage, sequential expression, like firstly, secondly, all those things. Then frequency, scale, adjectives, negative expressions. So these are the things you need to notice. It doesn't mean that you need to search for all these clues. Okay. It doesn't mean that you need to search for all these clues. Many of them, what they will do, oh, in strategies, they have explained, like we need to underline scale, we need to underline adjectives, we need to underline number, all those things. So we need to search for all these. No, you're not supposed to do that. Whatever uh, is visible to your eyes, whatever, you, when you are skimming, whatever you find it, it's important. And it's like all these strategies, you can underline those. No need to underline whatever number is there. You need to underline all the numbers. It doesn't mean like that, okay? And if any adjectives are there, you need to find out whether this is an adjective or not, whether this is a scale expression or not. No, it's nothing like that. So if you are seeing all these like names, number, if anything is visible to you, you can just underline, that's it. Don't search for this. When you will read, if you are seeing, then you can underline. Fine, hope it is clear. Then focus of the text. When you will skim the text, I'll show you how to skim, okay? So when you will skim the text, you need to know the focus of each text and find out the sequence of the topic. As I told before, for example, in text A, it's definition, text B, it's uh, assessment, text C is treatment, and text D is management, monitoring, whatever it is. So that is the sequence of particular topic. Okay, so for that, you need to find out the focus of each text. In text A, what they have mentioned, regarding what they have mentioned, text B, what it is, text C, what it is, and text D, what they have mentioned. So all these focus, you need to find out and you need to write on your text booklet, not in your answer booklet, in your text booklet, you need to mention, fine? Then, so the material will be like this. I'm just showing the material. Okay, so text A, the heading is their management of burns. Text A will be like this, text, then text B, text C, text D. And then you will have the instruction, okay? Then the questions will be like this. 
so in which text can you find information about so that will be like uh, sometimes it will be five questions sometimes six questions and sometimes seven questions usually it will be it depends upon the uh, topic and the questions okay then you will have 6 to 13 fill in the blanks sometimes it will be like question type okay and in this topic it is like 6, uh, six to 12, uh, 13 is uh, fill in the blanks and 14 to 20 is the question type sometimes it will be like vice versa okay fine so now we are going to start doing reading party you all have the material right take that yes, material open that material yes, when i am uh, reading you need to underline that fine is it okay okay yes ma'am ready yes ma'am yes yes ma'am yes, ma so yes. now the time is 454 indian time right yes correct okay so before starting the skimming, I need to tell you one thing. You need to complete your skimming within two minutes time. Fine. Two minutes time okay. for skimming these four text. Four text. That means text A for 30 seconds, text B for 30 seconds, text C for 30 seconds, and text D for 30 seconds. So total of two minutes. Fine. Okay. Then two minutes for your one to five question or one to six question whatever is the first part you need to complete within two minutes so total four minutes over then you need to complete your next part that will be like seven to fifteen or whatever it is the second part you need to complete within three to four minutes time so it's eight minutes over eight minutes. and the last part of questions last five to six questions again four minutes time so it is four. 12 minutes so you can complete your reading party in 12 minutes time sometimes it is possible to complete within 10 minutes time and the three minutes time you need to check your answers that means you need to check your spelling mistakes if you're making any spelling mistake they will not give you a mark that is 100% sure. So whenever you are writing your answers, it will be legible and you need to write it properly like the spelling is correct. If any incorrect spelling, they won't give you mark. Management of burns. That you need to underline because it's the title of this topic. Okay, so management of burns, you need to read, underline. Then text A. So they have given here burn depth. Okay. So burn depth you need to underline because it's the subheadings, right? Headings, subheadings, everything you need to underline. So burn depth. And the first line you can just read. What the, then you will understand what the topic is. So we learned regarding paragraph structure, right? So when you will read the first line of the particular paragraph, you will get an idea what they have explained in that paragraph. Okay, so burn injuries are classified according to how much tissue damage is present. So according to the tissue damage, they just classified the burn injuries. That is the topic actually here. That is the topic sentence here. So this is the classification of burn injuries. From that sentence, you will get an idea. It's the classification of burn injuries. So first one is superficial partial thickness burns, and it is also known as first and de third, second degree. So superficial partial thickness burns you need to underline and first and second degree you need to underline then coming to next point full thickness burns that means third degree so full thickness burns and third degree you need to underline no need to read it completely move to the next or next heading mixed depth burns so burn depth classification of burn depth sorry burn injuries that is superficial full thickness and mixed and the characteristics of these uh uh, sorry, this uh, burns, they just mentioned. So no need to read all this completely. So from this, what you got an idea, the focus of the text is classification of burn injuries. So give a heading, classification of burn injuries. Move to next text, text B. Here, they have mentioned regarding fluid resuscitation. What do you mean by resuscitation? The first treatment, what you are giving, uh, 
uh, for something, right? If it is a burn here, it's they are giving the fluid resuscitation, correct? So when you'll give uh, resuscitation for a, a cardiac patient, then that is also an initial treatment, right? So this is an initial treatment for the burn injuries patient. So fluid resuscitation, you need to underline. And as I told you before, when you will get a text, you just skim the text, okay, fast reading. That time, if you're seeing like 15%, it's the percentage you can just underline and the abbreviation you can underline total body surface area. Then again, 10%, 10%, less than, uh, greater than 60 uh, years, all those things you can just underline, okay? Then suggested regimen for fluid resuscitation. It's a subheading there. Then adults and children. So finally, what they have mentioned here, fluid resuscitation for adult and children. That is enough. Move to next Text. So here that heading is resuscitation, right? Resuscitation for adult and children. Move to next one. Text C. Management for burns. From the heading itself, it is clear. It's the management for burns. Whether we need to read completely, if you need, you can just read it. Otherwise, like you can just skim the text. Otherwise, no need actually. Okay, because it's management of burns. You just you can skim, like assess the patient, then burn depth, okay, cooling, pain control, immunization status, debridement of blisters, just the first uh, two, three words of the uh, sentences. Then application of antibiotics and suitable dressing. Enough. So what it is? Management, right? Move to next text. Text D, okay? They have mentioned regarding adult analgesic guidelines and the pediatric analgesics guidelines so regarding pain right analgesics pain medicines right so painkillers regarding painkillers they have mentioned here you no know, need to read completely so they have just mentioned pain score elicited from patient that means the patient will say the pain score and according to that we need to give the medication the only thing patient can self assess is what pain right we don't have any equipment to measure the pain right so the patient is saying it's four to six, then what medicine, medicine you need to give? If the patient is saying one to three, then what medication? Then for the pediatric analgesic guidelines, they have mentioned regarding paracetamol, non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs and opioids. That is enough. So from this text, we understood that they have mentioned regarding analgesic guidelines. You can just uh, write even analgesics also is fine. No need to write even guidelines. Okay. So... What is the sequence of these topics? Text A is classification. You need to write this on your text booklet. You can just write classification, an arrow mark, resuscitation arrow mark, then management, then analgesic guidelines. Hope till this it's clear, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay. Yes, ma so top uh, yes. text A says about what? classification, text B is resuscitation, text C is management, and text D is analgesic guidelines. Okay. <clears throat> now, move to the questions. So, when you will open your question booklet, you can see all these instructions. Time is 15 minutes. It's very, very important. Then for each question 1 to 20, look through the text A to D, find the relevant information. Yes, that we know. From, the, from these texts, you need to find out the answer for these questions. Then write your answers in the space spaces provided in the, this question paper. So in the question paper, they will provide the space. In that space, you need to write your answers. Then answer all the questions. Okay. Answer all the questions within the 15 time limit. So many of them are saying like, I didn't got time. So uh, I didn't complete. I don't know the answer. So I didn't write the answer for two questions. No, whatever you know, even from your medical knowledge, at least you write something because you don't have any negative marks for OET. If you are writing wrong, you will not get mark. That's fine. But if you're writing the answer, if, if, the, if the answer is correct, then you'll get the mark, right? So don't leave the questions. Whatever you know, you just write it. Okay, so answer all the questions, then your answer should only be taken from the text A to D and must be correctly spelled. If you are making any spelling mistakes, 100% guarantee you will not get the mark. Okay, some of them will say like a completed my reading part uh, in 15 minutes, reading part A in 15 minutes time. 
but I don't know when my result came, I didn't got the mark. Maybe because this is the reason. They are not checking their spellings. Okay. So even if you know the spelling, you need to see, copy and paste it in your answer booklet. Fine. Don't think like I am a nurse working for 15 years, 20 years. I know the spelling. No, it's, it's nothing like that. Okay. Anyway, the answer is there in your booklet. Please see, copy and paste it in your answer booklet. So can we move to the questions? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, 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 okay. Yes. Fine. So questions one to five. For each question, one to five, decide which text A, B, C or D. The information comes from, write the letter A, B, C or D in the space provided. You may use any letter more than once. Okay. So you can use the letter more than once. That means if, you, if your answer like two, three is C and uh, four, five is like A, it is, it can be. Okay. So you can write a letter more than once. So now you're not yes, going to read the text. You know the sequence. You know the focus of each text. So you have that booklet, like you have written classification, resuscitation, management, analgesic guidelines. So you're going to answer these five questions within one to two minutes time. Okay. So yes, first question, I'll read the question. You need to write the answers. Okay. So when you will read the question, you will get a key word or a key phrase, okay? This, that word will be the synonym of this sequence, okay? That means the same meaning with a different word, fine? So first question, age-related consideration for initial treatment of burns injuries. Here, the key word is initial treatment. The synonym of initial treatment is there in this sequence. So you need to find out which is that. Uh, B. Okay. Then the second one. Risk involved in certain treatments. So risk. If some risk happened, if something happened, what we, need, we will do? Where it comes? C. Next C. one. C. Yeah, I'll explain the answers later so third one is when to start when to start thinking about specialist treatment options b, b. treatment options b. you can write your answers okay fourth one b. treatment informed by patient self assessment treatment informed by patient self assessment so patient self assessment is the b. B. key phrase here okay then fifth one, how to categorize the severity of burns. So categorize. A. 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 So you know, A, we took only one minute to complete these five questions. Only one minute. One minute and three seconds. We'll check the answers. Okay. See here, age-related consideration for initial treatment. Initial treatment means resuscitation. Right? Resuscitation. Any doubt? Okay. No. So second one, the risk involved in certain treatment. Risk. So if some risk happen, what we will do? We'll do some management, right? Any doubt? Madam, Madam, we have, do we have to find that word risk in that uh, text C or what? how to find that? No, no need to see. No need to find out yeah. the same word in your okay. text. Okay. See, here they have mentioned the risk involved in certain treatment. In some treatment, mm -hmm. there are some risk. Okay. Yes. So, uh, if you need to know what are the risk here, just see. In this text, they have mentioned, see, debridement of blisters. There are some differences of opinion regarding breaking of blisters. Some suggest leaving intact because the blister acts as a barrier. And some of them are thinking like we can just break the blisters. So these are some risks they have mentioned, right? So if a okay. risk happened, we need to do the management. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, could you please uh, explain third one? 
Yeah, third one I'll explain. So when to start thinking about specialist treatment options? When to start thinking about specialist treatment options? When you will give medication, then if the pain is not subsided, then you will think about the specialist treatment, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Sir. Otherwise, you won't, right? When uh, yeah. if the doctor prescribes some medicines, and we are giving that medicine, and if the medicine is uh, like not effective, what we will do? Then again, we'll inform the doctor, and they will give some other medications, right? Yes. So specialist yes, treatment options will be in text D. So if you have doubt, you can just see here. Review in seventy-two hours. If pain cannot be controlled with oral medications, consider admission to burns unit. It's a specialist treatment, right? Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. No need to think about all those things. Like, or you can just think with your medical knowledge only. You can find out the answers. Okay, then treatment informed by patient self-assessment. As I told before, the only thing patient can self-assess is like their pain score. I can't find out uh, like Anjali's pain, right? Like I can't feel. So I can only just ask in the scale one to 10, what is your pain score? So patient self-assessment, that is text D, analgesic okay. guidelines. How to categorize the severity of the burn? The first sentence we read that the classification is yes. according to the injuries. Yes, so injuries. categorize Types of word. classification. Clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay. Yes, ma we will move to next section, yes. question 6 to 13. If you have any further doubt, we will clarify in the Q&A session, okay? So, question 6 to 13. Complete quest each of the sentence 6 to 13 with a word or short phrase from one of the text. Each answer may involve a word, a words, two words, a number or numbers or both. So, question number 6. Yes, sixth question. Classification of burn injuries depends on the amount of dash cost. Tissue damage. Tissue damage. Tissue damage. Okay. Classification means from which text it is? Text A. 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 Text A. Mm. It's very easy. Go to text A. So classification of burn injuries depends on the amount of dash cost. So classification, we know it is from the text A. Need to move here. Check. Burn injuries are classified according to how much tissue damage is present. So classification of burn injuries here. Burn injuries are classified according to. That means depends on how much tissue damage is present. That is the amount of tissue damage cost. So they just paraphrase the sentence. That's it. The sentence, the meaning is same, but they just paraphrased in a simple way. So the answer is tissue damage. We'll move to next question. Patients recovering from third degree burns. Third degree burns means from which text? Text A. A. Text A. A. Because we saw yes, classification yes. of burns in text A. So patients yeah. recovering from third degree burns are likely to experience a great deal of shrinkage and something. So shrinkage they have mentioned and one more thing you need to find out. Okay, some of something of their skin. So move to text. Contraction and scarring, ma'am. Yes. So when you will move scaring. to text here, yeah. it's not scaring, it's scarring. Okay. Scarring. So patients recovering from third degree burns are likely to experience what? Deal of shrinkage and scarring of their skin. So healing associated with considerable contraction. What is contraction? Skin was shrinking. Shrinking. Yeah. Shrinkage. So we have mentioned here shrinkage. Okay. And scarring. So the answer is scarring. Yes. Then. Next one. When evaluating mixed depth burns, you should take into account how the burns looks and whether there is dash in the affected area. So mixed depth burns, where you need to find out this? From which text? Sensation. 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 Yes. Sensation. Yes. When you get the question, you need to first think from which text it is. So you have the sequence. Yeah. 
So text A, yes, text A. What is the answer here? Sensation. 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 Yes. Sensation. Because when evaluating mixer depth burns, okay, you should take into account how burns burn looks here, what they have mentioned. Depth by the appearance. Appearance means how the burn looks. The look, okay, that is the appearance here and the presence of sensation. And the presence of sensation they have mentioned here, whether there is dash in the affected area, where there is sensation in the affected area. Here they have just mentioned with three words, presence of sensation. It is same like there is sensation in the affected area. Understood? So you have the keyword yes, here, depth burns here and here also the same word. So under that, you can just check what is your answer. So to find out the answer easily, First, you need to know from which text it is. If you don't know from which text it is, then it is difficult. Can I move to next question? Yes. Yes. You should cool burn injuries by taking off any dash or jewelry that is that the patient is wearing. So cool burn injuries. Hot dress. Hot dress. Hot dress. Clothes. Hot clothes. Desk C. From which text it is? Yes. This desk so, C. Management. Here we have seen cooling. So remove jewelry or hot clothing here you should cool burn injury so cooling is here by taking off any taking off means just removing right of any hot clothing or jewelry here it's ulta. it's like remove jewelry or hot clothing here it is hot clothing or jewelry okay that the patient is wearing so cooling remove jewelry or hot clothing and your answer is hot clothing it's easy, right? Yes. Okay. Then, next one. When cooling the wound, make sure that you don't put the patient at risk of dash. So, again, cooling the wound. From which text it is? Test to see. Hypothermia. Yes. First, you need to find out which text it is. Text C. Cooling. It's under the cooling only. Cool the wound, not the patient. That means... Not supposed to put water on patient, okay, or something like that. Cool the wound, not the patient. Taking care not to you cause hypothermia. So you need to prevent what? Hypothermia. 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 So when cooling the wound, make sure, okay, make sure that you don't put the patient at risk of what? Hypo. Thermia. Hypothermia. Right. Thermia. Not the patient. Take care of the patient. That means take care not to cause hypothermia. Okay. If you are cooling the patient, the patient may affect with hypothermia. Right? Yes. Next mm -hmm. question. The patient may require a dash booster depending on when they were last immunized. So immunization, where we have read regarding immunization. Yes. Only one immunization they have mentioned here. Check immunization status and update tetanus if necessary. If they need tetanus, then you need to give. Okay. So update tetanus if necessary. So your answer will be tetanus because here they have written the patient may require. That means we are not sure if necessary, we need to give like that. So the patient may require a tetanus booster depending on when they were last immunized. That means immunization status. Okay. When they were last immunized. So the need to check the immunization status. Then what is the answer? Tetanus. Tetanus booster. So if you are taking the keyword as booster and finding out the word booster, you can't see that word. Okay. So you need to find out the correct keyword. Then, next question. You should consider leaving dash undisturbed as these may help prevent infection. Okay. So you should consider leaving the dash undisturbed. So something you need to leave undisturbed as this, this may help prevent this infection. This so which text to it will be? Blisters. Blisters. Yes. Next to C, you should consider leaving blisters undisturbed as this may help prevent infection because they have clearly mentioned here debridement of blisters. There are some differences of opinion regarding breaking of blisters. Okay, that means you are disturbing the blisters. Some suggest leaving intact because the blister acts as a barrier to infection and others. That means if you 
break the blisters it will act as a barrier as a barrier to infection so here to prevent infection what do you need to do you need to undisturb blisters so your answers the answer is you should consider leaving blisters undisturbed right next question you should apply ointments containing dash to all deeper burns so from which text it is apply ointments to see antibiotics see. yes antibiotics see. because application of antibiotics in the form of ointment so here you should apply ointments containing that means in the form of ointment dash to all deeper uh, deeper burns so application of antibiotics in the form of ointment should or should always be used to prevent infection in any non superficial burns so non superficial burns means it's the deeper burns here right then so we completed till 13 and we are moving to 14 to 20 so in the case of mixed death burns so by reading the question only where you need to move in the case of mixed depth burns, what factor determines the local treatment or local treatment to give? So some factor determines the treatment. So what is that factor? Burn thickness. We need to check on the burn thickness. Depth burns. Burn thickness. Okay. So here in case of mixed depth burns, what factor? They just ask the factor. Okay. It all belongs to that burn only, but they just ask what factor. Okay. That's why we are writing only thickness. Otherwise, you can write burn also, but they just mentioned here in case of mixed depth burns, what factor determines the local treatment to give. So, you can write only thickness here. Local treatment should be based on the burn thickness at any specific site. Okay. So, what is the factor there? The thickness, right? Thickness. Yes. So the answer is thickness. It's very simple. Mixed depth burns is here. Here also it is there. So you understood that it is from the classification. You are che just checking only text A. If you don't know the text, what you will do? You will search all the four text and simply waste the time. So 15th question. What is the maximum number of tries recommended for attaching a drip? At, uh, at the scene of a burns incident. So maximum number of tries you need to find out. From the question itself, test to be. it is clear. It's a B, number. two cannulations. Test to be. Two, test to two, be. Yes. Two, two. yes. So from the question, it is understood that it is a number, right? Not only mm -hmm. in the listening, in the reading also, you can just foresee your answers. So here... Intravenous fluid should be started as soon as possible on scene, although transfer should not be delayed by more than two cannulization, cannulation attempts. So, attaching a drip means what? Through the cannula only you are attaching the drip, right? Without cannula, is it possible to give a drip? No. 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 So, here the number you need to find out. It's so simple because they have mentioned two canalization attempts. So your answer is two. Moving on to the next question. How much resuscitation fluid should a child receive per kilo over 20 kg? Maybe this question will be challenging for you all. Okay, because many of them are confused only because of this question. Okay. In this topic, like how much resuscitation fluid should a child receive per kilo over 20 kg? So, from which text it will be? 100. Text to be 100. Asking you from text which B. text it is. Text B. 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 Text B. Because resuscitation. Text B. Okay. So, how you calculated it as 100? They asked you the question, how much resuscitation fluid should a child receive per kilo over 20 kg? If the child is over 20 kg, then how much fluid the child receive per kilo? 20 ml. 20 ml. Yes, because here they have mentioned, give 100 ml per kg for the first 10 kg body weight. 
okay then plus 50 ml per kg for the next 10 kg body weight plus 20 ml kg for each extra kg here 100 ml per kg for first 10 kg body weight that means if the baby is 10 kg then how much you need to give 1000 ml right 100 ml 100 ml 1000 ml per kg 100 ml 100 ml per kg 100 ml per kg for the first 10 kg body weight. So if the baby is 3 kg, then 300 ml. Yeah, 1000 ml. If the baby is 10 kg, then 1000 ml. Plus 50 ml for the next 10 kg. 50 ml for the next 10 kg. That means 1500 ml. Okay. Now, plus 20 ml for each extra kg. So, so if about the baby 20 is more kg. than 20 kg, the 21st 20 the baby ml. is 21 kg, then how much you will give? 1,700 oh, ml. Uh, 1,700 hmm? 1,700 ml. 700? 1,700. 1,500. Yes, 1,520. Who is that? Good. 1,520. 1500 for a 20 kg baby right if it if the baby is yes. 20 kg then it's 1500 yes. for each extra kg if okay. the baby is 20 kg, kg, per kg 20 for each ml. extra kg you need 20. to give 20 ml okay so if the baby is 21 kg then you need you need to give 1520 ml okay anyway okay. all these things is not necessary here i'm just uh, explaining to understand okay so the question is how much resuscitation fluid should a child receive per kilo over 20 kg? So if the baby is more than 20 kg, then the 21st kg, how much you will give? It's 20 ml. 20 because ml. they have asked here per kilo. Clear? Yes. 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 So your answer will be yes. 20 ml. No need to write 20 ml per kg because they have already asked you here per kilo. So no need to repeat that. You can write only 20 ml. Now, the next question. Before attaching a fluid resuscitation drip to a nine-year-old burns patient, what percentage? So you need to find out some percentage of the body needs to be affected. Okay, so if you are, if you want to give a fluid resuscitation to a, a child, like nine-year-old child, then what percentage of the body needs to be affected? So again, resuscitation, so you need to, yes, you need to text B. Here they have mentioned if the burn area is over 15% of the total body surface area in adult or 10% in children, intravenous fluid should be started as soon as possible on scene. So 10% in children. So what is the answer? 10%. Then, next one. What additional analgesic? What percentage? They asked you what percentage. So, when you will write the percentage, you need to write 10%. Okay? That percentage symbol you need to put. 18th one. What additional analgesic is recommended in the first instance for a patient with a moderate level of pain? So, analgesics, which text? D. Test D, Tramadol. Yes. So, here they have asked you the question what additional analgesic? What additional analgesic is recommended in the first instance for a patient with a moderate level of pain? So, moderate level. So, you need to check in moderate pain. They need to check additional analgesic. So, here they have mentioned moderate pain, pain score 4 to 6, recommended analgesia in addition to column 1. So, column 1 already they have mentioned paracetamol. Okay. In addition to that, what you need to give? Tremadol. You need tremadol. tremadol. Only the name they have asked. So, you need to write only Tremadol. No need to write Tremadol 50. So, you can just write Tremadol. Then, next one. What route? Okay. You need to find out the route. So, what route? should be used to administer ibuprofen to children. So, which text? D, C, manage. D, 
ഇവാലുവേറ്റഡ് so after how many hours or uh, how many minutes okay whatever it is how after how long it's a time period right after how long so 72 72 72 72 72 hours so pain relief hours. means you need to check in text b right yes so where it is mentioned text d yes and our data should be reviewed last. after third column last hours and adjusted according to pain score so after that you need to uh, uh, review the patient after 72 hours you need to review the patient and adjust according to the pain score so here after how long should a patient's pain relief regime be reevaluated so here reevaluated instead of reevaluated they have mentioned reviewed okay so the answer is 72 hours do you know how many minutes we took to explain all this anybody knows any guess we completed our 20 questions to try to 15 minutes now yeah it's 17 minutes if i'm saying yes. like 17 minutes 10 yes. seconds but i have explained in between okay if you are doing alone then you won't take this much time so what do you think now those who have mentioned time is their problem then what are you thinking now i can do it now with no time limit mm-hmm. yeah the confidence okay. level also so when we started good. it's like this mm-hmm. right? little difficult still it's difficult no definitely as a beginner it will be difficult by day by day if you are practicing like this it will be very easy so when first when we started this it will be like this i think most of them completed their questions right within this time frame so yes, we will yes. ask like this if you are asking this to us okay if you are asking like is it possible to complete within 15 minutes then we will say like this what so what okay so so what so manju i think manju right manju yes ma'am now what's your reply um i think while practicing i can uh change my opinion mark <laughs> so you can say like this i have completed my reading part in 10 minutes time okay so sure. this is edu skills international thank you so much ma'am it was wonderful class ma'am and yes, ma'am. i need to inform you all always remember people who have helped you along the way and don't forget to lift someone up that's what we are following in edu skills international so if you know something please share your knowledge to others try to help someone lift them up okay